is the APSA Cape Epic. After the Hilltop finished the prologue at Mirandol, the 2012 Apsa Cape Epic moved to the edge of the Clan Karoo and Robertson for Stage 1. The rough terrain and three major climbs were testing. The wickedly steep nature of the early ascents had even the top men portaging. The three-time winners, the Bulls, were again struggling, Sam battling on the climbs. The 361 Songo Specialized Thunder and Saza defending a slender 13-second lead over 360 Life's Evans and George, who are keeping close company over the first half of the stage. But Evans and George suffered the first of many punctures that cost them dear as plugs failed to work. All the while, they were leaking time to the leaders, who had, under Sousa's instructions, eased off to allow the 360 pair life to join them. Up front, Sousa and Sanda steadily up the tempo until only Alvin Lakata and Robert Menem of Topic Ergen Racing could stay with them. Sam's form improved dramatically over the second half of the race as he and Platt made their way back into the chase group. Evans and George were chasing back again after another puncture stop. 361 Songo Specialized were consistency personified as they led Lakata and Menem away from the chasers, but then the elastic snapped and Stunder and Sarza were on their own. The chasers were fighting for second. Lakata lost time to Jam Durela. While the Bulls 2 pair of Ditch and Boma joined Stukli Pro's Uber and Loser in second. The Bulls 2 had a good shot at a podium place today. Uber stopped briefly to repair a mechanical, but he would soon rejoin his partner. Genzer and Kugler of Multibound Merida were on their own in fourth place. Into Robertson and Sarza and Stunder had opened up a big lead as they crossed the line for their second stage win on the trot. A job well done. The sprint for second was won by Stuckley Pro's Uber and Loser, and Bomer and Ditch had to settle for third place. But the day was about so much more than the races up front. After the relative ease of the prologue, the 2,350 metres of climbing over 115 kilometres of brutal, unforgiving clan career terrain put the vast majority of the field through a torturous experience as the temperature soared into the high 30s by midday. It was a long day of pain and suffering. For a few unfortunate riders, their epic dreams ended all too soon. I always have to come back next year. The 10 hour time limits or those who'd been out there just too long suffer the unkindest cut of all. No change in the yellow, rust, blue and bright green jerseys, but changes in the mixed and African leaders. A smooth, efficient ride by Sazo and Stunder puts them in a commanding lead. The battle for second in 10 26 seconds between two and four. Neon Chuti and Jans van Rensburg in the African leader's jersey. Bigham and Suss increased their lead by five minutes in the ladies. Jag Kraft stage win in Robertson leaves them a minute and a half adrift. And Eric and Ariane Kleinans now lead the mixed. After a long, hard and hot day in the saddle, there's one cue the riders don't mind waiting in. The showers. Ensuring the 1,200 participants have hot showers at the end of each stage is a responsibility the shower sponsor Afripix and Hans Gruer take very seriously. Truck trailers have been adapted to accommodate custom-made containers with a row of individual showers that provide a comfortable and spacious area to wash all the day's dirt, dust and sweat away.
Africlex provide the hot water through smart technology piping systems and Hunsgrohe provide eco-friendly taps and shower heads. For the second year in a row, hopes of having an all South African team on the top step of the podium at Lawrenceford took a serious dent on day two of the 2012 Absa Cape Epic when Team 360 Life's David George suffered multiple punctures throughout the out and back stage from Robertson and he and Kevin Evans lost 24 minutes to the leaders. Feeling really good and Dave just hit a sharp rock which just pierced the top of the tyre and uh, didn't seal and knew we were going to have to try and plug it or make a plan so maybe took a little bit of a gamble we were eight k's from the from the second tech zone you know the gap was two minutes we thought let's push on you know if the tire sealed should be okay and pushed on and literally just got onto the back of the group went down the next descent and the plug blew out so i think by the time we got to tech zone three we were down 10 or 12 minutes and then had to replace the rear wheel and you know i think we've uh, We've seen this movie before in 2008 and we made a good comeback there and you know it's uh, I wouldn't write us off just yet you know it might be a, a tall ask to to try and win the race but I think uh, podium position you know we're going to push hard for and uh, and possibly the Africa jersey. The day dawns on the second stage of the Absa Cape Epic as the riders prepare themselves for another hard day in the saddle. There's that dull ache the body feels. The season pros call it day three legs. There's trepidation in the camp. On stage two, the route will traverse the beautiful rolling dual tracks through the stony clan Karoo, passing through the charming village of McGregor. A brief glance around will reveal remarkable sandstone formations, but the riders will have to be weary of sharp rocks and thorns that could play havoc with their tires. Short, sharp climbs characterize the section from Ashton to Robertson. Riders wait in their seated groups ranked according to their overall position after stage one. The new ABSA African leaders, Janse van Rensburg and Neon Schutte of MTN Kuberka. Stunder and Saza, 361 Songo specialized in yellow. Ladies leaders, Bigham and Sus of Wheels for Life. And the Kleinans couple, Eric and Ariane of Contigo 28E, all waiting to fight another day. Uh, yeah, very good. And I mean, now, uh, we had a good day Please yesterday. Stefan found his legs after 80 kilometers. And uh, he found in his rhythm. So for me, jersey. it looks like he, is, he has the shape and uh, we just need to activate it. So, yeah, the race is still long. Another six days to go and we'll see what we can do. Today we um, tried to stay calm again and um, race more in the field, not um, trying to attack or something um, but just to to see how the others are what the after superb stage, how they are after yesterday one, the because the recovery the you always can see it after the first Eric stage Clayons how the, how the others recover the um, we are feeling Contigo pretty good and uh, looking forward to the stage the gun goes and the craft leader jersey wearers lead the 1200 strong field along a stretch of tar take them to more spectacular scenery and also some challenging mountain biking. Today may not look as tough on paper relative to the brutal stages 1, 3 and 4, but out on the tracks, the rough trails, the short steep rises and the competitive racing among the world's best mountain bikers, it's another big day out. Riders soon will cross the famous Breda River. They won't be happy submerging their shoes, making them wet and heavy for the next hour or so. The river's origins lie in the Skuberberg Mountains near Ceres, a major source of irrigation for the farmers who occupy the fertile lands in the floodplain. Vineyards of Robertson, a major source of grapes for South African winemakers and supermarkets alike. Came to be the longest wine route in the world, perfect soil conditions and climate make it a fertile valley. And like the images of this great race, the produce is exported to all corners of the globe.
The group is stretching out, a sure sign that someone on the front is pushing the pace hard, aiming to burn off the large group before they reach the narrow technical trails of the Klein Karur. Telcom Business Masters leaders Nico Fitzenmai and Rob Sim are on a storming day today, able to stay in touch with a group of leaders. It's a risky move because they'll be operating at a slightly higher level of intensity than they're used to. A bunch this large causes the top pros some stress with riders fighting for a good position on the narrow tracks with sharp rocks and hidden holes on each side. One wrong line can end a rider's chances. The less experienced athletes will be more nervous, taking risks just to stay in touch. The top pros will take care of this by upping the speed to try and drop the slow riders, thinning the group to a size that's more to their liking. Carl Platt looks like he's primed for action today as the road slopes upwards. Thunder and George stay out in front where they can avoid crashes and keep control of the race. MT and Quebec are the first contending team to have a mechanical. With a long way to go, it's better it happens sooner rather than later. A compressed air canister, a staple in the mobile toolbox of every racer. It inflates instantly, far better than any pump. Back on the road, they've got some work to do. The tracks traverse a region hosting diverse flora and fauna. Team Reciem's Neil McDonald manages to avoid going viral on YouTube as a Daker narrowly misses his front wheel. The charming village of McGregor welcomes the riders to the first water point of the day. Founded in 1861 on the Caesars River, it's named after Reverend Andrew McGregor, a Dutch Reform Minister from Scotland. Whitewashed walls and thatched roofs, this might be the best preserved example of mid-19th century townscape in the Cape. Riders roll into town in a big group, looking forward to a fresh set of cool bottles and some food. The tech zone is filled with the pros' spares sent ahead of the time, should they need to replace broken or damaged parts. The Rafir Solarent Mountains, carved by nature of millennia, watch over as the athletes hurry along towards the stony paths prescribed by course designer Dr. Evil. Team BMC have been animated all day, keeping the pace high, ensuring an exclusive front group with some of the world's biggest names in mountain biking. Sousa, Stunder, Frenchens, Platt, Saar. Blue Crane, South Africa's national bird, watches the riders below. Alexander Moore's 2009 Swiss champion in the marathon has also won a stage in the Tour de Suisse on the road. His partner Moritz Milatze is the current cross-country German champion. Emil Lindgren, the Swedish champion in cross-country, followed by two-time world marathon champion and former world cross-country champion Christoph Sauser. His yellow jersey takes precedence over any other jerseys as the Absa Cape Epix race leader. Urs Huber of Team Stuckli drives hard with another spike in the day's profile ahead. The smooth climb contrasts starkly with the rough surfaces we've seen in the race so far. Riders will try and find a rhythm, but when the road turns upwards, a few riders find out painfully that they simply don't have the firepower to match the front runners. The main contenders are still at the front, showing no weakness yet. Those left behind will need to take a few chances on the descents to regain contact. Oh, but Stunder goes down, proving that anything can happen and does. And then it's BMC's turn to have tyre trouble, perhaps not quite as well rehearsed as some on clinically solving the problem. They'll have some work to do, but we'll be looking to the water point for a lifeline, where riders will slow down, allowing them to catch the groove. Recovered from his fall, Stunder leads them into order point two. Hannes Genzer takes the opportunity to replace his wheel. He's noticed a slow leak in the tyre, one that the sealant has failed to repair. Arian Kleinans, newly married to Eric soon after last year's Absa Cape Epic, where they finished second in the mixed category. They ended on a high with a stage win after fellow Swiss countrymen Esther Suss and Barty Bucher dominated the race. Now it's their turn to control matters. But Arian's marathon ability is among the best in the world. A 
head of rivals Entover and MP, Robert Daniel Momsen's fits in mind sim ride with Bart Brenchens, whose partner Jan Bevers is understanding now why Brenchens has never returned to the Epic with the same partner. World-class exterior athlete and former winner in the mixed category, fits in mind knows how to prepare for a big event like this. Sim, a great athlete in his own right, has learned some more tricks from the best. Yvonne Kraft and Elizabeth Brandar push hard to the top of the short climb to stay in touch with a good group where they can take shelter in its large draft. Ladies race leader Sally Bigham and Esther Suss of Wheels for Life. Bigham rides a traditional 26 a hardtail, saying she feels comfortable with the familiarity of it, but does admit looking longingly occasionally at Suss's 29er, knowing she has it a little easier. MT and Quebec look good on paper at the start of the race, but after a lackluster first two days, they now look as though they're coming into their own. Suss and Bigham's performance has been faultless, however, Ending them a 25 minute advantage over Bayage and Brighthouse. The race for the third place in the stage and overall is between Kraft and Brandau and the MTN Quebec pair, less than two minutes between them. Lush, productive farmlands combined with natural vegetation and some Renosta felt. The contrasts of the Klein Karur. Shades of yesterday's rough, steep climbs. Sarza lays down the law on the punishing uphills. Trouble for Team Bulls to Boma puncture. they have to try and insert a plug to seal the hole. It was no doubt caused by one of the sharp rocks. After a struggle, they elect to fit a tube. Not ideal as this poses the risk of a pinch flat. It has certainly threatened their overall position they've worked so hard for. All part of mountain bike stage racing. Now they'll have to work to try and get back to the group. Of the several game reserves the route visits, this is Frolocate Nature Reserve. Some 2,000 hectares of Renosterfeld vegetation, zebra, wildebeest and buck. Sauza, an athletic specimen himself, keeps the pace hot with his young partner Stunder matching his stride. 360 life won't let them go. The rest fighting hard to regain contact. This looks like a telling move. Knox and Yamamoto just hanging on the back. George and Evans need to have a good day after the disasters of day one. Thunder supreme on the descent. Onto the flats and it's all wide open. The gaps have appeared. The pressure's on at the front and it's the race leaders turning it up. Multiband Merida in the group. Moors and Milat still trying to catch up. Heading into water point three. The team at Van Luver and Wine Estate has put on quite a show. The front runners ride through the cellar to collect fluids and fuel waiting for them. The slickest team at the water points is consistently Multivan Merida. They have a strict game plan with one rider collecting food, the other bottles. They don't want to waste a single watch chasing back to the front after a slow change. Back on the tracks, the group is all together. There could be a bunch sprint for a stage win here. The clouds were burning off, the heat was on, and the group had thinned out a little. Feeling the pressure at the back, Jacques Elsa van Rensburg of MTN Quebec and Kohei Yamamoto of Songo Specialized. More spectacular wildlife. 
The riders will sense that home for the night is near. On the midfielders might feel relief, the leaders will begin nervously jockeying for position, running through options in their heads for possible tactics to capture a coveted stage win in a sprint finish. The finish at Robertson Beckon. It's hard enough for an athlete to sprint for himself, but in a two-man team race, he has to consider the other rider. Communication is key, without giving anything away, of course. And Sam accelerates. He has a gap. All Platt has to do now is finish ahead of the second place rider on each team. Brilliant move, great tactics. Sam knows Platt's done it, and a win for the Bulls. The Bulls make amends after a disastrous prologue and significant time losses yesterday. Nalti van Merida are right there with 361 Songo specialized following close by. Simon Fitzenmaier conclude a superb day out. Whilst the Kleinans couple Eric and Ariane confirm their status as the preeminent mixed team. Likewise for Sally Bigham and Esther Sousa, third win in a row. Top step of the podium once again for the Bulls, the first time in three years that they've won a stage, proving they are true champions. Multivan Marita's form seems to be returning. 361 Songo specialized, confirming their status as the team to beat. The Stöckli guys, they attacked, but a bit too early. And everybody was, suff everybody was suffering a little bit. And just when they, when they um, stopped the pace, then I went. And that was, yeah, was, I was lucky that was the right moment. <laughs> and then I came around the first corner and, and I uh, started to accelerate and I thought, ooh, my legs hurt now. <laughs> and then I, was, I saw uh, it was not too far to the next corner and I thought, okay, I can make it. <laughs> In 2010, we won the Epic, but not a stage. And then last year I, I had uh, the problems with my, with my leg. We were only on podium once. So it's, uh, it's good to be back on the top uh, podium of the stage. Yes. Yeah, and today, like Stefan said, um, the profile wasn't that bad and uh, we could keep up with the guys. Uh, and it was really hard to get away today because the climbs were too short and then there were two long straights and uh, so everybody could get back. But when Stefan attacked, I said, yes, perfect. And then he, he got the gap and then I, just, I was watching and uh, I knew that's going to be really hard to beat me in the sprint. Great relief for Platt and Sam. 361 Songo specialized step on the podium once again. Despite a fall by Jans van Rensburg, another good day out for MTN Kubeka. Team Bulls too lost big time. Bigham and Sus stayed out of trouble. Pinyasvel and Nuzli had their best day so far. In the Telkom Business Master, Simon Fitzenmaier in the top 20 overall, seven minutes clear of Eindhoven and Impey. And Eric and Ariane Kleinons took their second stage win by over six minutes. 361 Songo specialized solid in yellow with a comfortable buffer to dark horses Ursub and Kornilusa. Topi Gergen in third, but never right off the balls for an overall podium position. No change in the ladies. Simon Fitzenmaier gain over Jack Kraft. And the Kleinons pair still dominant in the mixed. The much feared stage three takes us to Caledon, passing for Liesdorp with four big climbs on the profile. The Tollhouse climb midway marks the highest point of the day. With a fast 5k descent, dropping 500 meters into the valley. The UFO climb at the 100k mark, however, is sure to be the decider in the day's results. This is the APSA Cape Epic.